Big Conard Bach for GT Bach back with another video of the GT Adventure Series. I am coming to you from historic Saguaro Ranch Park in Glendale, Arizona, where I'm going to show you guys the beautiful area, explain some of the history of this park, and show you some key landmarks to check out. That's all coming up. So Warro Ranch is known today for tourism, recreation with a park featuring playgrounds, dog parks, sports fields, and regattas. But that is the new Saguaro Ranch. In this video, we're checking out the historic Saguaro Ranch. The historic ranch is set on a plot of 17 acres and was first established in 1886 by William Henry Bartlett and his brother Samuel Colcord Bartlett. Many buildings were constructed and there were buildings for the ranch hands, superintendents, and family and friends. There are lots of plants including rose bushes, palms, and more. In 1972, the city of Glendale purchased the last 80 acres of the ranch and set aside 17 acres for the historical area, thereby preserving the original buildings. The remaining land was used for picnic areas, ball fields, a children's play area, and other city facilities like the public library and Glendale Fire Station. The ranch was put on National Register of Historic Places in 1980. Some cool facts about the ranch are that many animals were raised there. Draft horses and mules powered the different equipment operated and in the 1890s, somewhere between 500 and 1,000 hogs were raised before being shipped by train to the various markets of the United States. Harry Adams, who was the second superintendent, founded one of Arizona's first fruit growers association and was even in charge of a horticultural horticultural exhibit at Arizona's 1890 Territorial Fair. The guest house which was built in 1898 was designed by a Chicago architect named J.B. Silsby and the house was completed in a very impressive 72 days. Electric, electricity came to the ranch in 1899 and automobiles were first used at the ranch in 1905. The first long stable cotton was planted in 1915. Unfortunately in 2017 there was a tragic event when a few buildings were burned in an arson incident. Fortunately, many of those buildings were restored before 2020, with a total cost of $331,870. This is the blacksmith shop, which was first built in the 1890s. It first started off as a blacksmith shop, but in the 1920s, Saguaro Ranch became significantly mechanized. The shop became a machine shop and was equipped with many tools and machines dedicated for automobiles and farm implements of the time. Sadly, the uh, shop you see today is a replica of the original one due to the fire incident back in 2017. But a lot of the original equipment are still on display today. There's an old water pump and an anvil. I think those are uh, the jacks, like the jacks used to clamp stuff together when being worked on. Very impressive. And then that looks like an engine of some sort. This area over here is the dairy barn, which was built in 1928. Cows were on the ranch before this time, only to supply milk and butter to the original family. 
However, in 1927, when Richard W. Smith bought the ranch, cows were raised commercially. But it wasn't until 1932 that it became a retail business at Saguaro Ranch. The milk house was also built in 1932 to supply the milk that came from the cows. Have you ever wondered how milk was processed back then? The first step was pasteurization to kill bacteria. That was done by heating the milk with steam produced by one of the boilers on the ranch. After refrigeration and a very large cooler, containers of milk were then transported into the pour room where it was drained into a machine. There was a centrifugal action, action provided by the machine. It divided the liquid into milk and cream. Sadly, the dairy barn and milk house are replicas of the original one due to the fire incident back in 2017, but it's still pretty cool to see. This is the well house, which was actually a very, very important building in the history of Saguaro Ranch. It houses a groundwater well pump. And this building that we see today is actually a recreation of the SRP Salt River Project pump house from the 1920s. There was an, in the original pump houses, there was a wooden derrick which was erected to use and drill the well. Once the well was working, there was an electric pump that was installed in the lower half. And, um, the project which was drilled in 1919 pumped water into ditches um, this was done to lower the water table which had been arising as a result of irrigation and it was unfortunately damaging crops by bringing salt and other harmful minerals to the surface there was a drought that struck Arizona in the 1920s the late 1920s so they decided to use the um, pumped water for irrigation and it is actually a practice that continues today. There was never a well at the site as far as is known. Usually the project is located next to canals and laterals so pump water could be distributed to irrigation companies and customers. The full-scale model which is seen today of the early pump house was donated by SRP and was built in 2003 by the SRP employees. There is unfortunately no well underneath the pump which was obtained from a well site near Yuma and electrical transformers are currently not connected to any power source. This is the old pump right here ladies and gentlemen. Man that thing is gorgeous and big. I know it's very hard to see, but it's a big pump. Sorry about the abrupt shaking. These are some old, old plants and trees. Very beautiful, actually. And then this is one of the plots of land that was used for farming back then. This is one of the main lawns. Also in the area is a rose garden. And the guest house and main house, which we'll check out shortly. This, as far as I know, is the fruit shed. There's a sign right here, so let's see what it says. Yeah, it, it's a packing shed. It was constructed in 1891 and is one of the oldest buildings on the ranch. Designed by architect James M. Creighton, which was a prominent architect in Arizona. How the shed was used, unfortunately, is not known. But it is presumed that figs... Grapes, 
apricots and peaches, which was grown by the ranch here, were prepared for shipping. In 1895, the first Thompson grapes were planted at Saguaro Ranch, and soon the ranch had 180, no, 100, 130 acres of this variety, which is preferred for drying as raisins. Citrus and cattle became the most important products at Saguaro Ranch, and this building was no longer used to pack fruit for shipping. By the 1930s, it was being used to store grains and other agricultural supplies. The veranda, which is seen today, is actually a reconstruction of the original porch from the 1890s, but the rest of the building interior is original. The interior, which has been remodeled more than once, originally had a dirt floor. There's a concrete floor that had been added in the early 1950s. Over here is the main house and guest house, which we'll see very shortly. So this building right here is the main house. Um, it was the home of the superintendent who managed the ranch for its owner, William Bartlett. The oldest section, which is on the right side, was actually built in 1891 as an office. In 1895, it was expanded and converted into a residence. After Barlett's son was diagnosed with tuberculosis in 1898, the house on the left was built. Also, when the guest house was built in 1898, there was a second story addition and also an expansion of the house added and the veranda was built to connect the two buildings. And after 1899, the temporary home became the guest house. When Smith got the ranch in 1927, the main house became the family's residence and the guest was reserved for visitors and household employees. There was a remodeled interior um, and a new patio of concrete and brick was built. The porch that you see today is actually a reconstruction of the original veranda, and the restoration, which was based on historic photographs, was done in 2004. Over there is the foreman's house, as far as I know. This over here is the rose garden, which has a variety of plants. There's yellow flowers, um, and there's roses as well. I'm unsure when the rose garden was added, however. This over here is the adobe house. Let's see what this says. The house, which is the oldest in Saguaro Ranch, has been believed to built, be built in 1887, the year after William started the ranch. It was made of adobe bricks, which was actually made here at the ranch, possibly by using dirt that was made, excavated, to create the crawl under the house. The first part was built um, with the adobe brick and then the covered porch on the west side. The porch on the south side, as well as the wood frame section on the east side, were added later. It was originally the residence of the superintendent who managed the ranch at the time. And after the main house was remodeled in 1895, the building was used to house ranch employees. When Smith bought the place in 1927, it became the office. Today, it was restored with a new concrete foundation in 1987, and the wood frame that you see now is not original. 
but was built as a part of the restoration project. Here are land speculators, rich men. They were all rich and they were buying land up. And this was really the only building you could see. This was like where you'd get invited to a big rich man's convention. And they'd come out here and they'd sit here and they'd talk about their land and what they were going to buy. And they divvied up the whole valley. And at this time here, see, they could walk around the corner of this building here and they could see all the way to Phoenix and down because there were no trees, no nothing. You'd be able to see the river and everything and then go, oh, I'm going to take that land over there. I'll take that over there and over there. And we'll build the ditches here and the irrigation over there because they had to build everything. But unless they did, this place would never have been built. This is like the first modern city in the world, totally built from technology. If it wasn't for railroads and the technology to build the dams, the dams yeah, yeah, the Phoenix wouldn't be here. Yeah, I know they built the Hoover Dam. I mean, it's one of the most uh, one of yeah. one of the most modern dams of the time. And um, I know they built that because there was lots of water. There was lots of water on the um, the salt the Colorado River. So basically, all that stuff that's around the dam, if that dam weren't there, there would there'd be a lot of water. Well, the whole thing is, the whole area is not just the Hoover Dam, but the whole area. The whole area, the, like all this. Way down to, to Yuma, okay, constantly getting water. The Grand, there's a big hole in the the ground over there called the Grand Canyon. Yeah. That water every year coming at the same time and the same amount. But the water that falls on your head here is useless. It's just a nuisance because it's, it's the desert. Okay. Exactly. But the water that we use and that we need comes from all the lakes and all the reservoirs and everything that, that we built before. Otherwise, we couldn't live here because just one rainfall like would be devastating. Uh, uh, it would be, you know, actually wash the house away. Exactly. You can see even, like, have you ever been down to Mexico or something like that? And you see that, that two canals there? Oh, I've seen those, yeah. Yeah, okay, well, you'll see one canal there that for most of the year is entirely empty. Ooh. Big, long, concrete thing there that's entirely, the other one has water in it. Yeah. But the big one is only there for the water that's going to run off. Because if that water, that's not used by us. That water that's in that big ditch when it rains and everything, that, they, they get rid of that before it floods us out. That's okay. The water we get, we exactly. Well, so, yeah, otherwise you couldn't live here. Right, well. Clean the water and the railroad. The land's great, but what are you going to do with all your produce? Because of all the water. I mean, even if you got a car, where are you going to go with all your. Because you can grow oranges. Yeah, you do have the railroad, and yeah. You can get a refrigeration, you know, get packaged in ice. You can grow a, a, a orange here that's going to cost you hardly nothing to sell it in New York. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's it. And that's what they did. That's, that's what they talked about when they were sitting here. You know, they were saying, yeah, well, you know, I can sell the produce here. Um, they were raising big cotton. Yeah. Exactly, that is very true. Up north, up north, and then they have the canals that bring it down there. Oh yeah, that's what I mean by north, the Grand Canyon, and then they have the pipes and the canals and the reservoirs. Exactly, and, I know. It used to be that river would run all year long. Wow. And it overflowed, and then it watched everything lay, <laughs> and then you had to start all over again. Exactly, I mean, okay. so it is very good that people were very smart back so, then. It wasn't really smart, it was more all the technology coming down. I mean, these guys were, yeah, you know, they had sort of like Silicon Valley. You know, oh. Like, how could, you know, unless, unless the whole system was together, you know, they were particularly smart. I don't think it took a genius to figure out if you buy land here, you can sell an orange in New York if you have a railroad. You know, and they built the railroads right down there. Now, exactly. At the same time, they were building the dam. And as soon as they got all that, they were multi millionaires. I know. And the first railroad actually comes from England. Yeah. Uh, the, the Flying Scotsman and those stuff. Well, yeah. thank you, sir. Sure, sure. Oh, one little thing more. Okay. You see in the main house? Yeah, the main house. Road 
the oh, wow. to climb up. Oh, wow. That's, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, I know. That's where, that's where the servants stayed. You know, they climbed up the rope and that was an office but the one over there, the ranch house there, they built the bread. Yeah. Yeah, I actually, so yeah. Thank you so much for your time, sir. Yeah. Well, have a good one. So as he mentioned, part of the reason that Saguaro Ranch was built and that the whole area of the Valley of Arizona was built was because of all the water coming from the Grand Canyon. I mean, this was basically, like that man said, the first real modern city because they have like all the water, um, they figured out a way to get all that water down here in the middle of the desert. So if it weren't for all the water and the people that built the water project, the salt water, the salt river project, SRP, um, all these dams that were built, that would actually catch the water. So if there was not even a dam, um, there would be no Phoenix. So, definitely very, very important history to say. Before we go, I thought I'd just tell you some of the news side of Saguaro Ranch as well. There's someone selling, selling cell cones as well. The Ramada area is actually closed, it looks like. Oh, that's just a sign. Oh, it's only for reservations. Okay. But, I mean, this is kind of a vintage Rangada. It was built in the 1970s and 80s. You can see there's a lot of huge vents. Something else that's cool, there's a huge statue with two people riding a bicycle. I mean, that is a very, very interesting way to ride a bicycle. You're um, on the front of the handles with your feet towards the back, and then the seat, which is technically where you sit while riding a bike, is where your passenger sits. <laughs> Never thought of it doing that. So basically the new side has a lot of sports field going on. Lots of sports events going on at the moment. So we're not going to head down there. But they also have playgrounds, people riding their bikes. And if you need to use the restroom while you're here, then they do have those. They have more picnic areas down here where you can sit. There's also a amphitheater it looks like and lots of good trails that you can walk down I mean this looks like a very nice park I mean not as nice well actually I'm not gonna get too biased I'm a youtuber but um Saguaro Ranch is a pretty good park. I mean, it provides a lot to you. You can learn so much with this park. You can have so much fun. You can learn a lot. Um, something else they do is they have field trips. They have field trips that they do with schools in the area. Uh, you obviously have to schedule a field trip. Um, I actually had an experience when I was in fifth or sixth grade I can't remember but our school actually toured Saguaro Ranch we got to interact with some blacksmiths um, we got to see inside the main house um, we also had lunch as well so that was a very very fun experience so that was basically the new side so apparently this Ramada area was almost 40 years old, built in 1886. So that's pretty much it.
Well, everyone, that's going to do it for today. Thank you so much for walking, uh, watching. Thank you so much to that man for explaining the wonderful history of Saguaro Ranch in Arizona itself. Um, if you do like this video, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. Um, and I'll see you next time on GT Adventures. Until next time, peace out, y'all.